So welcome to those who've joined me who want to get uh, more organisation in their business. So I hope over the next ooh, 45 minutes to an hour, I will be able to give you some insights and some tools and some ideas of things that can um, help your organisation um, get just a little bit more um, clarity and a bit more efficiency in what you're currently doing now um, from what you're currently doing now. I'm going to share my screen, um, screen two, and let me know if you can't see my screen. So up in the top right-hand corner, you'll be able to see um, how you actually view the screen. So you can see whether you um, have little me up there um, on the right and the slides. So hopefully you'll be able to see me talking and the slides as well, so that you can get um, a good understanding of what we're going to go through. Now, um, up there's um, there's a, a little um, place for you to write notes. So I'm hoping that um, there's a chat box that I'll use, and so or questions and answers. Um, what I'll use is the probably the chat box. That's probably easier um, with a few questions, so that then hopefully you can share. Um, some of the answers to some of the questions that um, I go through that will give you um, a little bit of a hand. So uh, the first thing here today is to basically look at taking out some simple strategies. That's my goal, is you'll take some simple strategies, you'll be able to hit the refresh button in your life and in your business, and then basically refine what you're doing now to just be a little bit more efficient. That's my goal today. So um, at the end of this, that's um, my job done, if that's what you're going to take away. So when we look at a business, one of the things we look at saying is, what is your mission in your business? What's your mission statement in your business? Do you have a mission statement in your business? Because the mission is basically saying, what are you actually out there in business to achieve? And so many people, when I say to them, you know, what is your mission statement for your business? What are you actually out here to do? What are you out to deliver? Who are your clients? Uh, what are you out to achieve in this business of yours? Often people don't actually know what it is. It might be on the website. It might be um, written in brochures, but it's something that hasn't actually been discussed or um, taken on heart with the actions. A mission statement needs to match the actions. And the mission statement is how you're going to achieve the vision. So having clarity of what your company's um, actual mission is and what, what the actual um, you know, vision of why you're actually doing that mission is really, really important because then that means that you can be very clear that what you're doing in your day to day is on mission. Are you on mission or not? Or are you just skirting around the outside? So a mission basically describes, you know, what your organization does and how it's going to deliver that service. And often it says who you're going to deliver it to. Now I've got a couple here I wanted to share with you. Ours for Action Coach is Action Coach is a team of committed, positive, successful people who are always striving to be both balanced, integral and honest. That's our mission statement. American Express, they define their mission statement as we work very hard every day to make American Express the world's most respected service brand. So that's another one. Um, or Honest Tea defines their mission as to create and promote great tasting, healthy, organic beverages. So do you have a current mission statement and um, is it something that your um, team are very clear of? So that's my first question. And I really want you to take some notes because if you can take some notes and um, have some things that you can action afterwards, then that means that your time with me has been valuable. If you're not going to take notes and not going to action anything, any anything that you've taken um, from this webinar, there's not there's not so much point if you're not going to act on it. So the next one is looking at saying, what is your company's culture? You know, let's refresh your company's culture because a company's culture should relate to that mission statement. Um, it also should reflect the employees and also the company values. So what is um, the company culture like? What is your company culture like? 
um, you know, when we look at um, your company culture, are you very clear on what is that company culture? When we walk into an organization, we can feel what the culture is like. We can feel whether it's a great culture. We can feel whether it's a negative culture. We can feel whether it's a positive culture. And, and if we're looking at um, streamlining your organization and getting more organized, one of the things to do is, is a company refresh on your company culture. Um, one of the ways I've done this in the past is to have a small meeting with the, the leadership team or to do company surveys. You know, there's standard global um, engagement surveys where we get to see, okay, you know, um, does, does your um, company um, resonate the same values as you? Um, do your team members have your back? Would you recommend this company to other people? Um, uh, how successful do you think this company will be, you know, in the future? Um, do you have 100% um, confidence in this organisation? Do you feel supported in your role and do you feel appropriately rewarded and recognised in your role? So these are some, some standard questions in global surveys to have a look at, okay, what is your culture of your company like? Is it, is it a really um, engaged culture? Is it a positive culture? or is it a negative culture? So the, the better your culture is, the more streamlined and the more um, passionate and organized your team will be. So recommendation is to have a look at what your culture is like if you're not sure of what it's like. Um, and this then steps down to, you know, looking at yourself um, and also your team and saying, you know, what's the motivation le level like of you? Because it doesn't matter whether you're a CEO, it doesn't matter whether you are um, you know, have a large company, whether you're a small one-man band, whether you're a startup or, or working within a large company, um, what is your level of motivation? So if you're wanting your life to be more organised and your, your business to be more streamlined, you know, how are you actually, um, how are you reflecting that? Are you motivated? You know, what's your motivation level like? You know, do you have the power to implement things? You know, are you in high spirits? When you walk in the room, do you lift the energy or does the energy go down? So if you're wanting your team to be motivated, you need to be leading that yourself and, and leading from um, the, you know, behaviours and the language that you're actually displaying so that if you're motivated, then the people will feel more motivated and the team will deliver um, on what they're there to do and you'll deliver better and much more smoothly if you're motivated and enthusiastic and engaged in what you're doing. So when you go to work, are you thinking, oh God, I wish I wasn't here. Oh gosh, another day. And if that's what you're thinking, your behavior would reflect that. So check in on your motivational level and, you know, when we talk about motivational level, you know, our attitude is our choice. We choose what we think, we choose our attitude. So if you choose to, to you know, step up the attitude, step up your motivation level, that will have the ripple effect with your team and they will all step up um, coming out of that. So then we wanna look the next level down. So we've checked in on, on yourself and what's your motivation level, we've checked in on the team and said, you know, what is the culture like of our team? The next level is to say, all right, what's the pulse of our customers? You know, when was the last time we checked in and said to our customers, hey, how's our service? You know, have you looked at your Google ratings? Have you looked at your Google reviews? Um, do you look at your comments on maybe your Facebook site or something like that? Do you speak to your customers and ask them, you know, um, what was the, you know, give me a rate of one to 10 with how we delivered this job and how could we have improved? And often people are really scared to do that, but that's how we improve. If, if you're never checking the pulse of your clients and your customers, then how are we going to improve on streamlining the service to them? We don't just want to improve when we've, we've made a mistake. We want to find out firsthand, okay, how do we do it? How are we doing how could we improve this process? How can we make it more streamlined? So, you know, sometimes people do small surveys with their clients as well and, and 
you know, I have one client that did a little survey, a monkey, um, a monkey survey and said, this is a 10 second survey um, to, to thank you um, for doing this. We're giving out, you know, a free, you know, iPad or tablet or something, but we really want to improve and you're a valued customer. So we really value your opinion. So that's one way to check the pulse of your customers. Others is just, you know, conversations. Um, and, you know, sometimes people do, um, they do NPS scores, that sort of thing as well. Um, so there's quite a few different ways you can check. But when was the last time you checked on the pulse of your clients and where you can streamline your delivery of the service to them and how it could actually be, you know, delivered a bit better? So hopefully you're taking notes and hopefully you've, you know, had a few things to think about so far. So the next one is looking at, let's look at our SWOT analysis. When was the last time you actually did a SWOT analysis? Now, when we talk about a SWOT analysis, this is looking at our strengths of our organization, our weaknesses, um, and also looking at saying, all right, what are the opportunities and what are the threats as well? And there is internal and external ones of both of them. So that we want to be making sure that we are actually have strategies in place to mitigate these weaknesses and also to capitalize on the opportunities that we have available to us and the strengths that we have that are available to us. So have you done a SWOT analysis lately? Um, and if you haven't, it's again an exercise worth doing. And I'm not wanting to, to overwhelm you by giving you a thousand and one things to do to get more organized. You go, well, how can I get more organized with all these, these things you've just piled on me? But I want you to look at this as these are opportunities of how you can get more organized. And then at the end, we'll look at prioritizing them. But a SWOT analysis is a very valuable tool to looking at saying, okay, how can we proactively mitigate any weaknesses that we currently have and how can we actually capitalize on any opportunities we have and our strengths as well and also mitigate any threats um, too so that they're part of our proactive strategies to actually make our business more organized because if we're only ever running our business reactively then we're always behind the eight ball we're not being proactive we're wanting to say our business runs proactively not reactively because then we're only reacting to when things generally go wrong or when things are presented at us at the last minute we want to be proactively running it so that we can basically set the pace of it and have it organized in how we feel we best want to deliver that service so SWOT analysis is also a good one to do with your team or your leadership team um, because they will come up with some ideas some strategies some thinking that you might not have thought. I've done it before with leadership team and, and the, the business owners have been blown away at the ideas that have come out from the team. So have a think about when the last time you, know, you actually did one. Um, so we've looked at uh, how we can be proactive and how we can be ahead of the curve. Well, do you have current goals? Yeah, and current goals is, is really the, the signposts um, along our mission to say we are on the right track. You know, what are the current goals for your business? Do you have current goals for your business? And, and in your business plan, there would always be a list of goals around your financial goals, around your strategic goals, um, like it might be in um, improvements for your business, um, around marketing goals, operational goals, and, um, and also management goals. So we've got those four key areas of the business, those key functional areas, and we would hope to have goals in all of those areas, as well as personal goals. So my, my own personal um, way of organizing that I find easy is to every year at the beginning of the, the year, get very clear based on your business plan of what your top goals are. What are the top goals? that are important to you and your business and personal as well as business. I think it's very important to have personal and business and share personal with your team as well, because the more people that you share goals with, the more committed you are and the more they can help you to actually achieve them. So it might be, we would like to get, you know, our goals around financial might be around turnover. They might be around cash flow. They might be around um, gross profit margin. Now, 
with goals, it's, it's critical to make them smart goals. So we're talking about very specific so that they're actually not we want more cash. No, we need to have a specific goal or we want to be cash flow positive this year this much or we want to have this, this dollar turnover. They need to be very specific. So then they also need to be measurable. So we need to have some kind of measurement for that goal. Is that goal measured by percentage? Is that goal measured by dollars? Is it measured by time? How is that goal actually going to be measured? So we look at saying, okay, well, it's a specific goal. It might be around, um, you know, how many new clients you want to take on. We're going to measure it by a number or a percentage or a dollar. It needs to be achievable. So it needs to be something that is actually um, achievable within your own organisation or within you. It, it can't be something that you can't actually really get your head around so it needs to be achievable and the other one is realistic and that's really looking at more externally we'd say have other people done it before and we need to have a time so I always look at saying what are my goals for the year so get very clear on what they are personally and within the main functions of the business around your marketing around your operational around your management and around your financial and then break them up into the quarter and again, these are in line with your overall business plan. Break them up into the quarter and say, okay, what would I like to achieve in this goal? What's achievable by the end of the quarter? And then out of coming, breaking down further, then look at the beginning of every month and say, what am I going to achieve in relation to this goal this month? And so that, that time is broken down to actually um, – real small bite size bits of that goal so that you can say okay this month this is what I'm going to achieve so that then you can go one step further and say what are the actions that I need to do to put into this goal to make it happen and then this is the crucial bit that I think most people miss and this is really crucial so I really want you to write this down put that in your calendar so if your goal for example is to take on say four new clients each month maybe that's the goal four new clients each month great okay how many clients do you need to talk to take on four what's your conversion rate well you might need to talk to 20 in the month so that's potentially five a week okay have we got appointment times in there and have you got times before that to set up the meetings do you have the prospects to actually speak to or the marketing plan to get those five people that you're going to speak to this week. So the crucial gap that people lose, that get they get all, um, you know, um, whoppy in relation to uh, not focusing on their goals is they don't put time in their calendar to actually do the actions to achieve their goal. So another goal, to give you the example, might be around, say, debtors. They want to reduce the debtors. That's a big goal. They've got a huge debtors list, might be. They have a lot of people over the money and they're like, we've got to get that down. Great. Okay. The goal at the end of the year is to get the debtors list might be from, you know, 100,000 down to 50,000 within 30 days or whatever, whatever that is. Great. Okay. Well, let's put some time in and have that assigned to somebody to do the, the follow-ups on those debtors. So a goal is not going to be achieved unless you're putting energy into it and unless you're very clear on what's the measurement and what's the date. So again, just to get very clear for me, nice and simple, easy way to do it is the business is, um, is overarching guide is the, is the business plan. Out of that, we have goals in the key functional areas. I know what the goals for the year are. They're broken then down into the quarter and then they're broken down into the month. And at the beginning of every, every week, I spend an hour to make sure that I've got time aside to actually put energy into those goals. So it's very simple and I share them with the team at the beginning of the week and say, these are the goals. These are the goals that I'd like to achieve this week. How can we all work together to actually achieve them and what are your goals so that we know what each other's goals are. So crucial bit, put it in your calendar. Very crucial and make them specific and, and go with the SMART acronym. So tying up any loose ends. This is another way of um, clearing your brain, getting more organized, getting more settled. 
So I meet a lot of business owners that have a lot of loose ends and it causes a lot of stress, causes a lot of frustration and wastes a lot of time with that stress and frustration. Now, now what do I mean about that? A lot of people don't have partnership agreements. So if we've got no clarity of who's doing what, who's got what percentage, what are the, the how is the financials done, et cetera, who's accountable for what. So if you don't have a partnership agreement and you have a partner, it's really important um, to get that sorted out. Structure is another one. What's the structure of your business like? Have you got it structured so it's optimized for tax? and for your growth and for your goals. So talk to account and get the structure done better. That doesn't sound very good English. Get it better structured um, to optimize tax so that you are being more organized and efficient and growth. Um, if you don't have a power of attorney or a power of guardianship, again, that can really um, cause a lot of grief in people's heads and make them feel very disorganized. So a power of attorney is, um, we, in WA we have to have both a power of attorney and power of guardianship. A power of attorney is if you happen to um, die um, or become um, disabled and can't make financial decisions, um, this gives someone the power to make financial decisions on your behalf, um, financial business and personal matters. Um, and then we've got a power of guardianship that's if someone needs to make decisions on your behalf um, when you're still alive in relation to, you know, if you're incapacitated um, so that you might have to make decisions about operations and medical things um, and things like that. So that's a power of guardianship. So that um, if something happens to you, the decisions about your business and your life are not made by somebody um, that might not be um, the right person. So these are important things to get inside, to get organized, to give you um, clarity of mind that your business is as organized and optimal as possible. So other things of like health and safety regs, um, insurances, all of that, um, they should all be um, up to date and have some time to review on an annual basis in your calendar so that you know that you're as organized and up to date in things that are really important um, because if something happens and they're not, then again, your business is being ran reactively, not proactively. And I've seen people have health challenges when they haven't had their loose ends legally um, in order and it just creates an absolute nightmare. So all businesses, other one is an up-to-date wheel. All business owners should have an up-to-date wheel. All human beings should, if you've got any, if you've got any kind of partnerships or any kind of assets, it's really important to have a current wheel um, because if if something happens, it just is a real mess, um, and that's not good. Um, next one is new technologies. Now. I meet a lot of business owners that are running their business on old and out of date um, technology. So every day new technology comes up um, to the public. So when was the last time you looked at updating your technology? There is so much software out there that makes our life so much easier and so much more automated. Um, I talk to people and they say, we take, you know, we write a hand quote or we type a quote up um, and then we have to type an invoice up or we have an invoice and then we have to send a receipt and all, and it all, it, it's getting the same thing done time and time again, it's repeated. So what we're looking for is saying in this day and age, there really only should be a one step, a one touch process so that the quote to the purchase order, to the invoice, to the payment are all automated. So they all um, are basically a, a one touch system. So when was the last time you looked at how you could actually upgrade your technology um, and how you could get um, a lot more efficient um, by being more organized? Some of the things that, that have made amazing differences to companies, I've had companies that have implemented WhatsApp for their team to communicate on projects quicker instead of you know people ringing around. Zapier can be amazing for autom automating things and connecting things. Um, we use Trello for our checklists. Some people use Slack. 
um, for communication within in their team. There's lots of different ways that you can get um, a lot more organised with keeping up with the technology that's available um, in your industry or in your organisation. So if you haven't, and if you know there's better, quicker ways to do it, please note that down now. And that's going to be something that will be a huge game changer for your organisation if you can um, implement um, ways of doing things more efficiently. My favourite, go paperless. I made the commitment a couple of years ago to go paperless. It only took about mm, a week for me to get the hang of it. And it's so easy to do and it makes your whole life so much simpler and more organized. So everything that I write is in OneNote so that it can be accessed from any device, from, from my computer, from my laptop, from Renee's computer, from my phone, wherever I am in the world, all my notes on all my clients, um, all the files are stored in the cloud so that everything is um, totally mobile. So when, when COVID hit and I had to quickly move home, not a problem, just plug the computer in here and everything's exactly the same. I didn't need to lug lots of files and lots of notes. It means that my desk is, is pretty much empty all the time because whatever I'm working on, I'm working on um, in, in what is on my computer. Um, it makes a huge, huge difference. Um, people that are paperless, generally studies have shown, um, are much more efficient and things seem to be much or more organised in their head because they're only focusing on what they're working on at that time. Um, highly recommend Dave Allen's book, Getting Things Done, um, The Art and Stress, the, uh, sorry, The Art of Stress-Free Productivity. Um, that book was amazing. I listened to it, well, gosh, I reckon about eight years ago, and I listened to it three or four times over, and it was awesome at getting, if you've got an office that's got a lot of stuff um, and a lot of paper, will help you to just get it all organised. Um, it's got a very simple framework to help you go through that. But, but my advice is go paperless. Um, stop having big lots of files of things. Um, I was speaking to a business the other day that they scan everything and everything's written. You can get signatures over the internet now. You can share documents. There, there is no need to have piles and piles of files. I haven't found a business yet. Um, it just keeps your brain so much more organised and clearer because you've not got all these diversions of all these files and papers and clutter everywhere. Um, huge massive game changer for me and you know when I did it I was what 53 at the time and they tell you know people say you can't teach an old dog new tricks well I just did it because I just wanted my life to be more organized and it was just brilliant so I'm sure most of you on this webinar are younger than me and will find it effortless to go paperless and make your life so much um, easier and more organized another one is passwords I hear a lot of people complaining about passwords, um, searching for passwords, trying to remember them, getting in a mess. Use a password organizer. A password organizer is, again, a bit of a game changer with organization because it means that all your, your passwords are in a safe. Um, it means that you have got lots of different levels of security. It means you don't have to remember them. You can change them. Um, LastPass is one that we use. I've, I've heard of another one called OnePassword. Um, there's lots of different ones. I would recommend you ask for um, the advice from your IT um, provider. Um, but again, it takes the stress out of your brain and it means that your business is more organized because it's not all um, you know, stored up here and causing these reactive problems where it's oh I can't remember the password and I'm stressed and it's different and what is it we don't have to worry about that we could just leave it to a password organizer and that looks after us for us so again a way that you can get your um everything synchronized and everything more organized and a lot less stress on having to remember them and that can do it for you um, in relation to computers again another big um stressor and again a reactive one is inboxes 
I have people talk to me about their inbox and they say, I can't get on top of it. It does my head in. It's, you know, it, it really is, you know, hurting me. It's ruining my, it's running my life. Well, no, the inbox is there for a communication um, tool. Have some rules around your inbox. Set up some rules. You might need to do a massive clean out and then set it up. So you can set it up to, first of all, get rid of all unsubscribe from the newsletters that you um, are not interested in. You can have some rules set up for, um, for filing them. You can also have some different folders set up for when you're, you're wanting to store information for researching later. Or um, it could be that you want to, um, you have a folder for people that you're waiting for replies and you just have a note in your calendar to look at it regularly. There is um, some also um, guidelines around inbox management that make a huge difference. Um, have times in your day where you're actually not governed by your inbox. You don't need to look at your inbox every five seconds. And you could quite easily put a, um, an automatic reply saying, you know, thanks heaps for your email. I reply to my emails between this time and this time, um, twice a day. If it's urgent, um, please don't hesitate to pick up the phone and call me. So you don't need to have your whole day ran by your inbox. Um, it's, not, um, it's not a way to run a business. Um, it's up to you to decide, okay, what are my rules around my inbox? How, how do I need to, to actually organize my inbox folders? And what are my rules around reply? And make sure that your team and your clients understand that. Mine personally is I will always reply the same day or within 24 hours. And so the team know that. So that if an email comes in at the end of the day, I'll re reply to it the next day. But I have a time set in my calendar for replying for emails. I don't have my day governed by you know, all these emails coming in and me, me constantly wanting to reply to them. No, if somebody wants to talk to me, they can pick up the phone and I can speak to them or one of my girls will speak to them and I'll ring them back. So don't let the inbox run your life. Set up the time you want to reply to your emails, set up the rules around your email, set up the, the, your, your newsletters, get rid of the ones you don't want, set up your folders, and, um, and then if you need to set up automatic replies, set up automatic replies when you're going out to meetings or you're on site so that it's very clear what your communication turnaround is. So don't let, honestly, I've had people that have had emails that have been um, inboxes of hundreds and hundreds, and then I've coached them to taming that inbox to just a few and getting their team to help them. And oh, the relief that they say to me now, oh, that used to be the band of my life, my inbox, and now you've helped me sort it out. It's not there anymore. It's not a problem for me. And it's just a huge relief off their head. So they don't feel stressed about that. They don't feel pressure, which is reactive pressure. We want proactive um, movements, not reactive ones. So that um, it's not governed by their email inbox. It's governed by them and who they want to communicate with and when they're going to communicate with them. So huge game changer if you can sort that out. And um, I'm happy to speak to anyone offline about that. Um, huge game changer. Next one is purging and updating your computer. When was the last time that you actually purged and updated your computer? Now I'm talking about emptying your cache. I'm talking about updating um, your Chrome or Safari or Firefox so that you're not running out of date, slow software, deleting old files, getting rid of them so that they're not, um, they're not um, slowing up your computer. Um, also decluttering your desktop. You know, a cluttered desktop is just not a, a, a proactive um, way of being organized. It, it really is, um, you know, creating a lot of clutter. If you've got dead accounts, when we're talking about computers, um, get rid of dead accounts, like old email addresses that are not being used anymore um, from people who've, who've since left your account, your, your business, and they're getting redirected to you. Um, while we're talking about updating, um, same with your website. If your website's got, you know, old, broken links, things like that, make sure that you keep an eye on them and put some time aside to update them. If there's really old, outdated case studies or pictures or something like that, 
refresh them. Same with, um, you know, if you've got, you know, on your computer or on your website, you've got a link to an Instagram or um, you've got a link to a Facebook page that nothing's been put on for years. Well, it's not up to date. So we want to have a look at saying, how can my computer and how can my, um, you know, IT be up to date? So putting time aside to purge that will declutter and make things go a lot quicker for you um, if you can get all of them decluttered and, and up to date um, as far as a computer goes. The other is as far as your physical space goes. So not just your computer, also your physical space. Um, in your office, when was the last time you rearranged it, cleared it up, gave it a refresh, decluttered, chuck some things out, um, you know, made sure that anything that was out of date is thrown out, make sure that, you know, it's, um, you know, very much a um, inspiring environment. You might need to put a hat, a, 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 a plant, or you might need to, um, uh, you know, put a, a nice picture up or move it around. So, so make that space that you're working out of, make that space when you walk into it, make it feel like you're energized so that it gives you energy, not that it's like, oh God, all this stuff is, oh, it's giving me a, head, a headache, it's in the way and it's cluttering up your mind. So if you wanna be more organized in the business, make sure your physical space where you're actually doing your business is, it's motivating, it gives you energy, it doesn't take it away from you. Um, if you've got an office that is just so deep, so in desperate need of a declutter and you need an outsider's point of view, um, I can highly recommend um, Heather from Finer Details. She's a personal concierge. She will come out and help you do it. She does that, that's her professional. She'll come out and help you declutter things. Um, and she's great at organizing. So I can highly recommend um, if that's the case, um, it's, if it's too overwhelming, Hi, someone to come in for three or four hours and they'll help you sort out with you. So I'm talking about old phones, old floppy disks, you know, old computers, old software, all the boxes of old stuff that you don't need. We want to get rid of it all. So your physical space is inspiring and refreshed and helps you feel energized to be proactively making great decisions, not looking at and going, oh God, this, this place, it does my head in. It just, there's too much to do. We want clear thinking. That's the important thing so that you can feel organized and feel very proactive. Um, when was the tools that you're actually using in this office um, updated? When were they updated last? How old is the computer? How old is your chair? Does your chair make your neck sore? Does it need the Cairo to go out and, and give you an ergonomic assessment? Um, is it is it not got any given or any movement in it? Um, is is there um, things that say, for example, your screen is is got a lot of light reflecting on it? Do you get sore eyes? So have your tools been updated lately? They need to be up to date to keep you as motivated as possible and to keep you as proactive as possible. You might need to invest in some, you know, blue light, um, you know, glasses just to stop that glare. If you're getting very dry at your eyes, you might need to get a new chair. You might need to update your, your height of your desk. But keep an eye on making sure that the tools that you're using to work with um, in that environment are um, up to date. So hopefully um, each time I'm giving you these suggestions that you're making some, some notes and thinking, yeah, maybe I need to do that um, because all these little things add up to making you more organized. List making, my husband will tell you I'm the king of list making. I love lists. Um, I personally use Trello because that's paperless and my team can share my Trello board. I also use Trello with clients, it's a free, list application and you can move cards, you can put checklists, you can copy cards, but always at the beginning of every week and at the beginning of every day, I'm clear of what I actually want to achieve. And that's in my Trello. I'm very clear of what I want to achieve so that I can have a look at it before I go to bed and go, okay, is this achievable today or not? Mm, that's a bit too much. Maybe I'll move that to the next day or the next day. So I always have on my 
Trello what I'm actually the night before I'm very clear of what I want to achieve what my big rocks are and any actions that need to be done that day Monday is another one that I've heard people are starting to use that they really like um, and these also can be linked to to different things you can put photos you can put links you can put all sorts of things in them they're amazing and they're free both Monday and Trello are, are free applications um, that people like and that means that you don't need a bit of paper that means that you don't need to loot have the bit of scrap that you could potentially lose so that you've just got it in your phone and so it's the same on your phone as your computer as your laptop so you just have the app there and you go okay this is my list for today and I get love the satisfaction of ticking them off um, and so highly recommend um, looking at that and just get into that habit of being if you're really clear of what success looks like the night before you go to bed, your subconscious mind actually sees that you've already achieved it. So that if you say to yourself, okay, tomorrow I'm gonna have an amazing day, I'm gonna get up early, I'm gonna do my meditation, go for my run, have my breakfast, I've got a couple of meetings, and those meetings are going to be really successful because I'm very clear on what I can do to help that person. Then I'm going to smash up my emails at this time. And then I've got a, a meeting with the marketing team in the afternoon. And, and in that meeting, we're going to get very clear on our message to our, our market because we're working out a newsletter for our clients or a webinar, whatever it is. Um, and then at four, I'm going to check in on my emails again. And then at the end of the day, return any calls at five o'clock. Um, or whatever else it is. So that's my clarity of the day. That's my list. That's what I'm going to achieve. And, um, and then the next day you wake up and you're very clear. If things happen out of your control, yes, you might need to move some of those big rocks, but they will be reactive um, upon what's happened. Whereas you're proactively planning ahead of the day, not just going into work and going, okay, what fires am I going to put out? What problems am I going to solve today? You're proactively planning what success looks like before you start the day, before you go to bed. So you can be very clear, let it go, have a good sleep, then wake up and get started. So huge advocate of lists. Um, and um, I just think it, it makes such a difference if you can get clear on what that success looks like. Um, another one here, which is you know one that I've sort of briefly um, touched on before is managing your personal energy. Now I've gone through quite a lot today and and you know we've covered a lot like I've put a lot into this there's a lot of stuff that I've covered here and you may be feeling overwhelmed and think oh my goodness me there's gosh there's so many things that um, I could do to improve but but what I want you to think of is what are the top three things that you want to improve on from this um, time that we've had today? Is it your inbox? Is it getting clear on your goals and what success is? Is it clearing away your junk in your office? Is it going paperless? Is it your, your energy? Do you need to work on, on your energy and, and, and getting up earlier and getting some exercise and getting some positive affirmations and doing some meditation? Work on your attitude first before you go to work. So what I want you to write down, what are the top three things? What are the top three things from today that will give you the greatest sense um, of getting more organised? and will give you the greatest sense of satisfaction and clarity in your brain um, that you can take away from this. Because I just don't want you to feel overwhelmed. I just want you to think, what's the top three? Um, and then I want you to prioritize, what's the top one thing that you can start on? The top one thing that you can start on to get a little bit more organized, a little bit more proactive so that you change the wheels of your business and change the wheels of your life to be running proactively and not reactively so that you feel in full control over the choices that you make with your time so that you feel energized and motivated at where you're spending your time. You don't feel, oh God, I feel so exhausted. I feel like, you know, I'm, I'm working so hard, but you know, I don't actually have a life you know, often people say to me that their business runs them instead of them running the business. So if that's you, you can start to work 
on some of these things to actually change that, to turn that around, to say, okay, well, if I do these top three things, they're going to help to go one step closer to me running my business instead of my business running me. And I want you to pick what is the top one? What is the top one that you need to do? And I want you to, to actually put some time in your calendar now, create a regular time in your calendar to stay organized and to start to get more proactive. Every Monday morning, Renee and I have that blocked out for us to work on our business. And I don't put appointments there unless it's really desperate for somebody to see me, but then I'll move our time for the afternoon. So do you have regular time in your schedule that you can start to work on that one thing, that one thing that is the top of your priority list to actually start to get organized a little bit more and a little bit more proactive. So I have a default diary um, that is my perfect week. And the goal is for the team to try and put my appointments in that default diary. So as part of that, every Monday morning is that scheduled time to work on the business so that we can be proactive with what success looks like and how we can actually be as organized as possible and help our clients as much as possible. So I encourage you to pick your number one now, write it down. Um, if you want to put it in the chat box, you feel free to put it in the chat box. Um, and, um, and then you've got um, me to hold you accountable. Just You can just put it to me if you'd like to do that. Um, and then put the time aside to actually do that and then keep that time aside every single week to proactively chip away at being a little bit more organized, a little bit more streamlined, a little bit, a little bit more um, uh, time efficient and a little bit more proactive. So you may have to do a bit of heavy lifting if you've, you're in a state where there is a lot of reactive running of your business. So you might have to do a big office clean out. You might have to do a, a purging of your computer. You might have to go through the pain of getting paperless or you might have to go through a massive inbox in your computer. Well, great, do the heavy lifting, book some, some big chunks of time to actually do them. And then once they're done, just schedule that regular time every week to get that proactive um, working on your business time done. And within, depending on what, what your organization level is like now, but it could be within as, as little as three months, you could really see a massive difference, um, massive difference. You know, an inbox has a massive difference. Going paperless can have a massive difference. Changing your environment, getting more up to date can have a massive difference. Changing your software in your computer and your business, having more up to date um, systems has massive impact on your business. So you're not being held up by computers breaking down or things like that. So please pick your number one. Um, please put it in your calendar now um, so that you're actually taking something away from this that you're going to act on. I really want you to act on something um, from this that you're going to take away. Um, then lastly, um, I would like to thank you. Um, and what I'll do um, as a thank you is I will um, send you out the links that I've got this information from um, for, this, um, for this webinar. Um, so that you've got some more tools. I'll also um, send you um, in that email, I will send you the link to, I recommended um, a book, the Dave Allen's book, which is about getting organized and more time efficient that I loved his book. Um, and also lastly, um, if you haven't read my book, um, I would highly recommend you to read it. And um, it's been um, many, many years putting it together and that shares my tips of success um, with how I've got more efficient over the years. Um, also, I'm happy if you would like to book um, a 15 minute complimentary chat um, to talk about some of the things that you might be finding um, are challenging with your organization in, in getting a bit more streamlined, a bit more organized. Um, I'm always happy to help if I can help. Um, those of you that know me, um, my goal is to touch a million people's hearts 
and be a millionaire of heart. So I want to try and um, change people's lives through the experiences I've had through my learnings. Um, so if I can help you in a small way, um, I'd be very grateful to have the opportunity to do that. Um, I'll email you um, a link um, to the book as well. So if you're interested in that, I'll email you a link to that too. So you can either have a look at the links I've used, um, book a chat or a book as well. So hopefully that's helped. And if there is any questions, please don't hesitate to ask. Um, click me an email or a text or um, we will have a chat.